well. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to today's Seniors Living Well. Our theme this seventh series is Fit and Safe. And we're talking about keeping fit on all levels, mental, emotional, physical, and keeping safe in a lot of areas. And Barbara Long just gave us a good reminder about some of the really terrible scams that are out right now. Getting a scary phone call from the IRS or Medicare or Social Security. Believe us, folks, you will never get a phone call from them, scary or not. So now we're going to look a little at um, physical health and staying fit and knowing um, about the resources for us here in Amateur. And with me is my longtime friend. I'm not going to say it, my old friend. Yeah, my long, time long, friend, long, long time, yes. Mel Welsh, who is now, who's a nurse, and you are now the community case manager for Sutter Sierra Region Medical Foundation. Did that's I get it close. right? That's close. Oh, okay. It's the um, Sac Sierra, um, and I can't even say it all, the, um, the region in Sacramento. But uh -huh. I'm also a hybrid nurse case manager that uh, Sutter Amateur Hospital also has me on kind of staff. They help with my salary. So uh -huh. I do follow the Sutter Medical Foundation clinic patients mm -hmm. and um, occasionally some of the Sutter mm -hmm. Amateur Hospital patients. Okay. And, and this is so wonderful because... Ever since I've been working at the Senior Center, I've been aware of, you know, we have these people that have extremely complex problems, often mm -hmm. seniors, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and once they're discharged from the hospital and discharged from home health, they're just kind of out there. Yeah. So yeah. you're kind of, you and your colleague, Carol, mm -hmm. are filling in that gap. Yeah, and our role, and, and you mentioned Carol, Carol Starr is, the, is an LCSW case mm -hmm. manager, so mm -hmm. she's a social work case manager does the psychological, social end of it. And this program, this case management, is part of the Sutter Care Coordination Program, uh -huh. which has been going on for about 20 years in the SAC region, Sacramento right. region. Right. So about a year and a half ago, Sutter Amador has really wanted to get the services of that. So they agreed, let's get it started. We'll pay half the salary. Let's just bring, bring somebody in. So in April of 2013, I started the program up here full-time um, and developed it and then went part-time with my colleague filling in the other half. Uh -huh. We also have a health care coordinator, and she's virtual. She's down in Sacramento, and she helps identify patients that we need to be following. So in the case management for the Center Medical Foundation, it is that bridge. If they are in the hospital, they get discharged, mm -hmm they have a complex diagnosis or they are moderate risk, high risk, meaning they've been in two times in a year or mm -hmm. they have certain diagnoses or they have more than five medications, mm -hmm. my role is to contact them right after discharge, uh -huh. make sure they have all their medications, uh -huh. they have a follow-up appointment. We, the medical the healthcare field, is realizing if they go to see their physician within seven days, they're less likely to go back into the hospital. Find There's that nice bridge of, do you understand your diagnosis? Do you understand your discharge instructions? Mm -hmm. Do you have home health? Do you need to get lab? Do you need any of these things? Mm -hmm. And can I help that happen? Mm -hmm. um, and then I have direct contact with all the providers. With all the providers, right. So you can kind of, you know, I've, I hear people say, well, I tried to get in to see my doctor, but I got an appointment in May. Mm -hmm. But... Yeah. For the folks that are high risk, mm -hmm. and, and we're talking about people like with congestive heart failure, mm -hmm. pneumonia, pneumonia. Um, heart attacks, but my focus with the Center Amateur uh, Hospital patients is really the congestive heart failure and the pneumonia, because mm -hmm. we're finding, and we're seeing a lot of pneumonia now because of the time of year, mm -hmm. but we're finding if these patients just get discharged and say, well, here are your meds, this is what you need to do, there's a real deficit in knowledge. Ooh, I don't remember what I'm supposed to do. So yeah. what we do is really stay in touch, mm -hmm. make sure that they're successful at home. Mm -hmm. They have everything they need, mm -hmm. be it a ride to their doctor's appointment or their lab work. Mm -hmm. We make that happen. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of um, reinforcement, a lot of hand-holding, a lot of contact, and they know that they can contact mm -hmm. me or Carol. We uh -huh. have a cell phone. They can contact us. They can get us. a hold of you. 
Yeah. And Medicare is really looking at these readmissions, and it's a 30-day readmission. Mm -hmm. If they come back in, so if they were discharged with um, congestive heart failure and they have a motor vehicle accident, they will still look at that oh. as a readmission. God. So we try really hard, hard to, to tell them you're not supposed to be driving. <laughs> be really, really, really yeah. careful. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I, you know, you and I have been nurses together for a long time, and as a home health nurse, I know that people, no matter how good the hos, uh, no matter how well the hospital does mm -hmm. on the day of discharge, mm -hmm. and really they're giving people some great information. Yes, um, you're so excited about going home, and you're getting hit with all these different things. Mm -hmm. When we go in the next day, sometimes they're like, "Oh, God, I don't even know what meds I'm taking." Yeah, I didn't even and, pick them up yet. Yeah. That too. Yeah, especially so. like, you know, pneumonia patients. Have you started your antibiotics? Oh, I haven't done that yet. And I may talk to them day two or three and they haven't mm -hmm. started their antibiotics. Oh, no. And you're dealing with people not necessarily just Medicare. Right. So you're dealing with people that may not have home health. Yeah. 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 So if the person does have home health, I kind of relegate that to getting in touch with them in a couple of weeks because mm -hmm. I'm confident home health will mm -hmm. be in there and take mm -hmm. care of them. And I also have a very close working relationship with home health. Mm -hmm. um, so on a daily basis, I'm checking in on the patients and finding out. And they know that they can text me or call me. Right, right. And we, and we have become part of that CHF protocol where if we can't open, say the patient goes home on Friday mm -hmm. and we already have too many people on the weekend, mm -hmm. we call them mm -hmm. or what, you know, whatever, and go over that little checklist that yeah. you give them. Yeah, uh, about what we call it, the, the stoplight. Stop light. Yeah. yeah, and I'm glad yeah. you brought that up because that was one of the things that I was finding because I follow heart failure not just from the Sutter Medical Group or Sutter Medical mm -hmm. Foundation, which is the Plymouth, Pioneer, Jackson Internal Medicine, Pioneer Hope Soon, <laughs> um, but I also follow all non-Sutter doctors uh, that have heart failure patients or pneumonia uh -huh. patients. Um, and I was finding when I'd call them, because one of the key things we know is you weigh yourself every morning. And if you have a weight gain over a certain amount of time, we can reverse heart failure from getting worse again. So I was finding that they don't have a scale. So I got a, um, <clears throat> excuse me, a grant from the Amateur Community Foundation to buy scales. So if a patient is discharged from the hospital, doesn't have a scale, they will get one that they can have forever. Wow, that's great. Also give them a packet, and you talked about the stoplight, and it's a green, yellow, and red. If this happens, do that. If that happens, mm -hmm. do this. Mm -hmm. um, I've supplied those to the home health agency. Mm -hmm. The emergency department has mm -hmm. it. The clinics have mm -hmm. them, the hospital. So there should be no excuse, but you know we make sure <laughs> the, that the person has they have the a scale. scale. Will they stand on it? Mm, yeah. Maybe. Yeah. But that's, you know, that's where sometimes all it takes is reminding them, oh, this yeah. could keep you out of the hospital. Yeah. Yes, you do have to weigh yourself every morning. Yeah. It could keep you out of the hospital. So. And I am finding, just when I call people now, I said, okay, are you weighing? Oh, yes, I weigh myself every morning. The nurse told me to do that, and I put it in the calendar. And, Great. Oh, yeah. yes, the doctor told me. So I am seeing that people are catching Being up. Being compliant And with that. people don't want to be in the hospital. They want to go home. Right. And it's stay. a healthier place to recover and be better. Especially right now when there's so many sick people in the hospital. Yeah, and I'm seeing a real uptick in pneumonia. Yeah. And to say, get your flu shots, get your pneumonia vaccines. Right. And um, I have found more people are sort of being careless about their flu shots all of a sudden and we really because we don't have those big fun clinics anymore mm -hmm. we really have to encourage people it's very simple ask your provider or you know go to Walgreens go to CVS go to Safeway they they it will give really you a flu shot really and I'm important. seeing thank goodness that the providers in the clinics are I mean if they're in for a visit they get a flu get shot get a flu shot they right. get it and if right. they're a certain age or certain criteria that will get a pneumonia vaccine. Uh -huh. So they That's have good. been really good about yeah. that. And it's really important too, if you go into the hospital with some kind of lung thing, because I've had patients say, no, I don't have any heart problems. And right there on their chart, it says congestive heart failure. I didn't have a heart attack. I was just having trouble breathing. And um, you know, it's very important for people to understand that that diagnosis, congestive heart failure, presents 
has trouble breathing. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And they need to and ask their doctor. the diagnosis can be chronic, which means that you've had it in the past and you could acutely or, you know, have yeah, it again. Have a exacerbation. Exacerbation. Yeah. And speaking of, we're, you know, a lot of the pneumonia patients are people that have chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and they get a little bit sick and it can be pneumonia. I'm mm -hmm. also working with the emergency department to really try to screen those people that maybe we could get them started on antibiotics and then do a, a warm handoff to home health ah. um, to keep them out of the hospital. Of course, if they have pneumonia, they go into they the go hospital. In, yeah. But how can we help our patients at that point of entry in the emergency department? Right. And, and uh, we only have another minute, but I think also getting patients to take more responsibility to be knowledgeable about what it is exactly they have. Yeah. So get your flu shot, get your pneumonia shot, and know, ask your doctor exactly what. So if, uh, if somebody wants to get a hold of you, is there a number they can call? Uh, they can call the hospital, 223-7500. Um, yeah, this is kind of a, it's a program that the hospital can refer to me and the okay. providers refer to okay. me. Okay, so they can't just call you up and say, I want to I see really now. need some I, help. I'd like to see that nice I would love now. to be able to do that, but we're, our caseload is but you had her here on TV today. Yeah. So uh, thanks, Mel, for all the information. You're and very welcome. We are going to go to break now, but stay tuned because we have some very interesting folks coming on for me to talk to after the break.